it's time to write the autoencoder code in tensorflow first of all we need to make sure that you are connected to gpu this t4 gpu is free so let's select t4 gpu then connect it and let's import the necessary libraries first we are going to use the tensorflow then its layer the model the numpy and matplotlib for visualization firstly let's prepare our data so i'm going to use the fashion mnist data set in this case but obviously you are free to use any other kind of image data set so in order to load the mnist data set just type tfkeras dataset.fashionmnist.load and it is going to load the data set once the data set is loaded it is going to be in array format so we need to convert all the elements of that three-dimensional array to float 32 and then we need to divide it with 255 in order to normalize it so all the pixel values will be between 0 and 1 which makes our training stable and easier once my training and testing images are normalized all i need to do is to reshape them to 28 by 28 by 1 because if you load these images their shape will be 50,000 by 28 by 28 in case of training and in case of testing it will be 10,000 by 28 by 28 so we need to add that extra channel dimension so that we could use the tensorflow convolutional layer that's why i'm going to resize these images to 28 by 28 by 1 and similarly for test images i'll do the same so you can actually check the shape so it's 60,000 by 28 by 28 by 1 sorry my mistake it's not 50,000 once the data is loaded normalized reshaped all we need to do is to create our model architecture so i'm going to follow the object oriented approach because i think creating exotic architectures using object oriented approach is quite simple so that's why i'll stuck with object oriented approach obviously uh, you can use the functional approach or any other sequential approach you like but i'll stuck with the object oriented approach it's quite simple all you need to do is to create a class first and then inherit the model api of tensorflow which we have imported right here and then you need to define two functions both of them are very important the init function where you actually define your layers and then the call function which gets called during the training process or the inference process and there you use your layers which you have defined in the init method so first of all as discussed in the previous video uh, we have convolutional layer with 32 filters three corner size and stride is one so this code is exactly what we have discussed in the previous video so if you haven't watched that video just go and watch it because i'm not going to iterate on it so now once we have all the layers created in call method i need to pass my input one by one to these layers so firstly let's pass the input to convolutional layers and then the output of this layer will be passed to this max pooling one layer then output of conf2 will be passed to max pooling 2 then flatten and similarly dense okay so this class is going to take latent space as an argument and based on this latent space we are going to initialize number of units in this dense layer and in that dense layer we don't have any activation function so let's run it similarly we are going to create our decoder architecture and this is what we have discussed in the previous layer and all i need to do is to pass this input one by one to these layers so after passing this input let's run it and now i have my encoder and decoder all i need to do is to combine it so i'm going to define another class that will inherit model in the about two classes decoder and encoder you can use model or you can inherit layer from tensorflow keras.layers.layer 
so it's optional you can use model or you can use layer but in case of autoencoder class you have to use model because we are going to use that a fit method and compile method and it isn't provided by layer it is only present in this model in this autoencoder i'm going to create an object of encoder and i'm going to create an object of decoder and this autoencoder will also take this latent space as an input from the user during object creation method and i'm going to provide that latent dimension to this encoder once i have the objects of encoder and decoder in the call method i need to pass my input one by one so firstly let's pass the input to the encoder and this will return me the encoded latent space variable which i'll pass to the decoder in order to decode it and this decoded will have the same input size as this input itself so let's run it and with this our encoder architecture is completed all we need to do is to train it firstly let's compile our model the latent space dimensions will be two let's create an object of this autoencoder class pass the latent space i'm going to use then the compile method the optimizer will be atom and you can use here any kind of reconstruction loss function in our case it's binary cross entropy but you can use here like mse mean square error or mean absolute error it's totally up to you but for us uh, i think binary cross entropy will work fine because our inputs are already between 0 and 1 and in the decoder last layer we have also used the sigmoid activation function so sigmoid with binary cross entropy will work uh, really fine and then i'm going to fit it so pass the input data the output labels which in our case will be same both of them are same and then the number of epochs okay so here this batch size and shuffle so you can also shuffle the data set right here and then batch it or you can pass these two arguments to this fit method but make sure that if you are using these arguments in this fit method then your input data should be array it shouldn't be tensorflow data set if you are using here the tensorflow data set then the batch size and shuffle isn't going to work you have to use them in this data pipeline but in our case since it's array that's why i can use here this batch size and the shuffle and let's provide our validation data and start the training process in the meanwhile what we can do is to prepare some data so that we could test the encoder and decoder let's select uh, 200 images from test and then their labels as well because we are going to use them to visualize the latent space pass these samples to the encoder of this autoencoder model so that we could get the latent space as an output because this autoencoder class is returning the latent space so what we can do here is to use uh, this autoencoder object in order to access the object of encoder so this is how the code will look like just use the object of autoencoder then with the help of dot i can access the encoder object which which we have defined right here so make sure that this name the encoder name and this name should match so we are basically accessing the object of encoder with the help of this dot operator and then we are passing our viz images to this encoder and then converting them to numpy so this is going to return the array in form of tensor so we need to convert the array to numpy in order to visualize it once i have encoded images this encoded images means latent space what we can do is to visualize this latent space so our training is done the loss is 0 0.32 which isn't great but i think for the sake of this video it will work fine let's run these two cells now uh, my latent representation will be these encoded images and then these are my class labels 
let's run and then let's create a figure with this 12 by 10 size and this is going to be our scatter plot and first of all on the x-axis or on one dimension I'm going to display my one latent space so I have in total just two latent spaces okay two latent variables basically so I'll display one latent variable on one axis and the other latent variable on the other axis and this is going to be the title of my graph and on the x label I'll have feature 1 on the y label I'll have feature 2 so these will be the two labels for my axis let's define the site color bar and finally uh, let's iterate on these class names and here what I'm doing is basically putting the labels for each cluster so when I'll create the graph of my latent space it will be like clusters because I have a 10 classes so for each cluster I'm basically assigning its class name which will help us understand that cluster so if I run it uh, here as you can see I have cluster are all over and these labels are defining what this latent variable represents so for example these blue dots are my ankle so here as you can see the color of the ankle boot is this sky blue and this is where my ankle boots lie all of those latent variables are close to each other similarly my bags are here and then the pullover coat and shirt so as you can see these pullover coat and shirts are almost similar objects so the model isn't good enough to differentiate between uh, these three items that's why uh, they are mixed with each other I think uh, this graph gives us much information about the performance of the model as well so I hope you have enjoyed this video and in the next one we are going to talk about variational autoencoders and why even we need those variational autoencoders and I'll see you there bye bye